our work for three variable systems is actually very similar to our work for two variable systems, just with a little more work. Uh, we can actually do this by a mix of substitution and elimination. Uh, because I have a few different, or th I have three different equations that I'm juggling, I find it a lot easier to actually label them, so that way I can keep track. Um, and our job the whole way is to kind of remove one variable at a time. And this is going to produce a two variable system, which we know how to deal with. So I think the easiest thing to do would be to do this by substitution. And we can start by rearranging equation 2, solving it for x. I'm going to take this, I'm going to plug it in to both of the other equations, because what this is going to do is this is going to eliminate x effectively and allow me just to focus on y and z for the time being. So I'm just going to show that um, substitution first, and then we'll start simplifying. 5 times 2y plus 3z plus 2z. All right, so let's deal with this first one on the left here. I have 4y plus 6z plus y minus z. I really like to show every little thing right now because I think it's important to stay organized. So I like to really show all of my work. I really don't want to miss any steps here. Uh, we actually can divide this through by 5 because if the pair that satisfies this top equation works, it will also satisfy this one, right? We just have, this is that scalar that I was talking about in the last video. So if y plus z equals one, and that is considerably easier to deal with, so we're gonna hold on to that and come back to it later. Over here, I have 9y plus 17z equals 1. And now, as you can see, I've got a two-variable system. So I've got y plus z equal to 1 and 9y plus 17z equal to 1. You could do this by either method. You could do this by elimination if you wanted to. It wouldn't be too bad. You could al also do this by substitution. Um, I think since we stuck with substitution originally, I just think we'll stick with substitution for this, but that's a personal choice. Um, either method, like I said, is okay. So z is 1 minus y, which means when I make that substitution here, I have 9y plus 17 times 1 minus y. Actually, let me keep my colors consistent here. Uh, equal to 1. So I'm going to have 9y plus 17 minus 17y equals 1. So I have 17 minus 8y. Negative 8y equals negative 16. And so y equals 2. Well, now that I've got 2, now that I've got one variable, I can work my way back up to get the others. I know that y plus z has to be 1. Well, if 2 plus something has to be 1, then that something needs to be negative 1. And then we're going to take both of those and work our way back up again. So if y is 2 and z is negative 1, then we know that x is 2y plus 3z. So it's 2 times 2 plus 3 times negative 1. 4 minus 3 is 1. And then we want to, just as we have before, write our solutions as ordered pairs, well, I guess in this case, order triplets. So x, y, z is 1, 2, negative 1. You also might see it written as a column vector. Um, again, that's kind of connecting back to our knowledge of linear algebra, if we know um, with matrices. All right, so you may have learned to actually, in past classes, to actually turn this into a matrix. Um, and solve the system that way. And if that is something you're comfortable with, you can absolutely do that. There's no harm in doing it. And actually the process that I used would be the same process that I would use on the matrix. Um, but kind of to reflect that matrix style, um, we sometimes express it this way too. I would accept either one, um, the ordered pair or the matrix.